All right, y'all, we back at it. So I just had to reach out to her and let her know what we was doing. And now we about to get this interview started. So I just want to thank everybody that was on at first, but I want you guys to tune back in. All right, all right, let's get it started. Appreciate everybody starting to tune in. I got a wonderful guest, been in the game for since 2008 and she, you know, bounced around a while, but now she's in her location in Austin, Texas, and she's doing her thing and she has a lot to talk about today. So you already know what it is. Garcy the Barber, talk your barber shit. And this is my live podcast. I want to say I appreciate everyone that has been tuning in over the years. I think we're going on three years now since I've been doing this and uh, I'm loving everybody that's been reaching out, all my special guests that been on. Uh, recurrent, uh, new, so it, it's been an amazing journey to hear everybody's growth, um, ambition, um, journey, um, how they capitalize from just being a barber behind a chair, but now they're doing um, products, and now you know they have their own multiple shops. It's it's been amazing to you know to sit down with so many people to help me grow in this industry since I'm still a little new. So it's given me an opportunity to see all the different directions that I can, you know, grow myself in this industry. And this is what Talk Your Barber Shit is about. You know, just coming together, being united, and, you know, seeing how we can just keep upscaling this this industry into a whole different atmosphere than it was before. And um, also, I want to thank everybody that's been shouting me out. Also, um, picking up my items as far as my Barber United hats. You know, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been showing love and, and showing me so much appreciation for me to continue doing this. So let's get it started. I see Barber on and let's do it. And now you can log in. Hello, hello, hello. Let's do that. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> I said it to you again, so you should be able to jump on. Wait. <clears throat> How do you All right, y'all. She's having little issues, but bear with us. You know, Instagram is kind of hard to monetize when you're doing it maybe for the first time. So we're going to get it right. All right. Um, oh, it's still there. <laughs> Just one of those days. I see you said me an invite. I'm a um, accept it. But if you see mine, it's accept mine. And once you log on, you, you you're good because I see. You. So I sent you your invite. We did. Okay. <laughs> I had to I had to get one of the young ones. I didn't know. <laughs> God, that's so embarrassing. I didn't. No, you, you good? You good? Hey. Hey, sorry. We we are we are all learning. <laughs> I can't even see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. No, I'm sorry. Sorry for the delay, everybody. I'm okay. We ready now. All right. I think it's up. Yeah, there we go. No, no, no rush. You know, let's, let's take our time. We'll, we'll get it right. So, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm a little nervous, but I'm I'm good. All right. Nothing to be nervous about. It is two barber people talking about the industry and enjoying ourselves. It ain't nothing to be nervous about. Okay. All right. So, um, to give you a little spiel about you know why I created this platform is. Um, you know, for basically for those that haven't been in the industry that long and want to know from someone that has been through a journey in this industry and have started at a certain point to be where they at now, 
And, you know, it doesn't have to be like a uh, um, um, lavish, like, um, journey, but it, 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 it can be something that it, it captivates someone to say, hey, you know, she went through this, he went through this, I'm going through it now, and they prospered through it, and I can prosper through it too. So yeah. it's not about, you know, yeah. you know this, this shining, you know, pearl or, or the diamond part about it, but just the, the, the knit and gritty part of like, how do you keep pushing forward when you feel like the world is against you, especially in this industry? So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I know um, you've been in. I know you've been in it since two thousand eight. Yes. And you know, you share some information how you located the different spots of um, barbershops that you worked in, but now you're in Austin, Texas, and you're doing your thing out there. So let's talk about the beginning, like um, the real beginning. Like what got you into it? What was um, the transition to say, hey, you know, I, I appreciate this industry. I like this industry and I, I think I can capitalize on it. What what sparked that that interest? Um, None of that about the capital and making money or, or anything. I didn't know anything about barbering. Okay. Um, it's crazy because I have four brothers, but um, I, I don't know any. I didn't know anything about cutting hair. I didn't know nothing about clippers or anything. Just literally one day my ex was just like, why don't you go to barber college? Cause I, honestly I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't working. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. So she was like, why don't you just go to barber college? And I'm just like, okay, didn't even, oh my God, thank God I didn't think about it. Cause had I thought about it, I probably wouldn't yeah. have done it. But yeah. um, not, I mean, <laughs> ah, I shouldn't even said that, but. Um, no, 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 that's good. So, I like that. Cause, cause so, I'm gonna I'm respond to that after you go, keep going. Um, so um, the process was easy. I just um picked up the phone called the school and it just the ball kept rolling and it was easy so um i just went to uh barber college and just started from there yeah, yeah. say so, that uh, uh reason i said i wanted to you to continue on that is because i i fell in that same same circle that same box like barbering was never like something that was like a go-to yeah. Like, you know, you know, your parents, first, especially for mom, my mom always wanted me to get a nine to five, yeah. you know, go in there and get work that corporate yeah. world and stuff like that. So that was like, you know, what you want to, what, you know, what I was perceived to go to school for, get my degree and, then you know, get a good yeah. stable job where I didn't have to worry about, you know, this, the mishaps of, you know, lay, they, I mean, layoffs do come, but, or just not knowing that where your income was going to come from. Yeah. So um later on throughout the years and when i met my lady as well and um she's my wife now at that particular point she was the, the same one that sparked me being in the, in the industry um, okay she was like, yeah. yeah she was like you ever thought about <laughs> you know cutting hair you ever thought about being a barber yeah. and i was just wondering in my head like where did that come from you're right right yeah <laughs> and, and, I, and I, I know she you know she saw me cutting my hair and stuff like okay. that and but it, I never thought about making a career out of it. And right. it was just funny for her to say, hey, I think you can make a career out of this. This mm -hmm. is something I think you should do. You should go to school and get your license. So for you to say that as well, it's like, you know, somebody out there sees something that sometimes we don't yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I would definitely have to say, oh, I know for a fact, without a doubt, it was definitely part of God's plan. Um, and I say that because looking back, like when I was, I call it my nine to fives, like I struggled because um, my parents always taught me, and I think they might've got it from Malcolm X, because I think I read a quote, I don't know. But they always taught me, no matter what job you do, you you be the best. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter, you sweeping floors. You <laughs> so I just, <laughs> every job that I had, I just, you know, yeah. did did my best, you know? And plus, you know, I was, I was in a good school system and, you know, I was just still con conditioned to, you know, ask permission to, you know, do this. And if they say, hey, you got to be here at a certain time, I mean, that's all I knew, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I didn't understand that, you know, that can, I don't know, intimidate managers or people that kind of aren't really doing their job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, so, so it definitely, yeah, this was part of God's plan because I don't think that I would have been successful 
in a nine to five, not because of my own work ethic, but because of, you know, just certain people that <laughs> seem to always be, uh, you know, have power over me and they just yeah. you know, aren't always good with it. And, you know, so, so yeah, this, this definitely was, um, part of God's plan for me and, and thank you, God. Right. And, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it still came with a price in a sense, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? It does. It does. So, yeah. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> does. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about like what the journey has been for you, um, to know that, um, what what was your first location? It was Columbus or was what was the first? In, uh, Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. So how, but, how was that like sh straight out of school or was mm -hmm. you able to barber at the same time you was going to school or what was the transition on that? No, we're, um, where we were at, um, no, we had to have our license before we could get into okay. any shop. Okay. And so um, I was in Dayton. I went to Dayton Barber College, but I'm from a small town. Okay. And uh, so Dayton to us was just like, you know, I don't know, like where all the bad people were and, you know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Yeah. So with me saying that, I didn't know anybody in Dayton. I didn't, have, you know, I didn't have no friends, nothing or whatever. So, yeah, and that's where I started my um barbering career and it just amazes me because like I said I didn't have like all my bar barber bros that I were in school with you know they had their homeboys they had you know they, yeah. they had their homeboys <laughs> friends they had you know yeah. what I'm saying like golly no, and I had I no do. One. I do. and so I literally like literally started with no clients like yeah with nothing nothing yeah. With, yeah. but with big expectation because Oh God, what they teach you in barber school is just not reality, honestly. Not everything, but you know, the, yeah. the glitz and glamour. It, no, that's not, that's not reality. But <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it amazes me that I stuck with it. But yeah, I, I, I literally started with, 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 with nothing, no one. Um, thank God I got into a shop that um, they were um, well established. They had been there already for probably maybe 20, maybe 15, 20 years, Correct. you know, so they had, you know, they had a good, uh, good clientele, but it was a old school shop. Mm -hmm. So that was my first taste of, of, cause in barber school, you know, they throw everybody at you, you know, you try to cut everybody or what, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, oh gosh, that was a major shock for me going into that, that, uh, barber shop because they just, it was, it seemed like it was endless. They would come, I ain't let no woman cut my hair. I ain't let, and I just, I was just like, what the heck is what? You know, I didn't even, me being so naive, I didn't even realize that I was getting into a male dominated field because again, you know, I have four brothers. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it just, it was just always been men around me and, you know, and yeah. I just never understood, I just never realized that I just always thought that men and women were equal Correct. because I have brothers and because I'm a daddy's girl and my father, you know, he taught me things. You know what I'm saying? I just, I didn't know. I don't know. I think my parents sheltered me because yeah, when I got into the barber, barbering world, I was just like, what? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, because I, I got to, and I got to see different sides of men where, where all I saw was, you know, my brothers and my cousins and, you know, my father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course they were, they were good to me. You know, they, they protected me and you know what I'm saying? So yeah, when I got into the barbering it, it, world, it was, a, it was a shock. It, it was, man, it, it was a shock. And, and, and again, not even realizing I'm the only female in the room, you know what I'm saying? And cause again, I, even to this day, like when I step into a barber shop, I'm a barber. And, yeah. I, and I, I think that yeah. we're all, You're right. you know, because that's what they, in barber school, that's our, we're barbers, we're barbers, you know? Yeah. So stepping into this arena, I'm thinking I'm on equal playing, <laughs> playing field and <laughs> oh, no, no mamma love. For me, I'm not speaking for female barbers or anything. I'm just, my experience, <laughs> oh no, quickly, they let me know, little girl, you're in a big man's world. So I had to navigate through that. It was hard, but I had God. Thank, thank you, oh, Jesus, <laughs> man. Thank, thank. I'm thankful for God. I, 
I love the direction that the conversation is going. And um, for the last uh, weeks or so, and before, um, I had a, a lot of uh, barbers, female. But okay, like you said, we're we're in a, a industry where we should just be all recognized as barbers. But you know, I love to hear. I'm sorry, this was back in oh eight oh nine. Now it's 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 fast. It's different now, but I'm just saying. Like, but, this, this was back in oh nine. You know, back then when yeah. even for when, before even before Instagram was even popping. That's a whole nother conversation right there. That changed the game. But so yeah, it no, was but, still but that. I I don't mean to cut you off, but I I agree with you because. Um, the first barber shop that I ever went to as a kid was owned by a female barber. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. And even though she had more males than female, mm -hmm. my first um, barber was a female. That's I I think that's a man. I think that's a beautiful thing because it, it just I just I love it when I meet clients that say, "Man, I'm so glad I found found a female." No disrespect yeah. to males, I'm so glad I found a female barber because my last barber was a female. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it just it opens. I mean, you guys don't even realize like it really opens your mentality. Like for you to accept a a female barber or having your first barber being a female, mm -hmm. like you instinctively will think. Oh, I mean. And I was a You're kid. not even thinking that, oh, women shouldn't even be doing this or women can't be a doctor or not. Like, you instinctively now would just, you know, you know go about life just accept, oh, that's normal. You know you what You know I'm why? Saying? You know why, honestly? Um, and not to go into too depth into it, but my mom um, had to deal with a lot of issues when it came to her hair. Mm -hmm. So watching her go through the journey and dealing with so many different people. Mm. And sitting with her and, you know, helping her with her hair and taking out her braids and stuff like that. When I decided to not, you know, when my dad was like, okay, you know, I, I can't do some of these styles that you want. And he found a barbershop for me. And when we walked in, I, I think my, my connection with my mom allowed me to mm. say, oh, I can sit in her chair. And I, and. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So when, and then just her, her vibe her way she communicated with me the way she went into detail when i told her what type of style that i wanted with my hair you know and she like she sat there and then she was like you know really like in depth like okay i'm gonna give you what you want where you go to some yeah. guy and you yeah. tell a guy hey uh i want this and they just be like and they just start yeah. cutting it they don't really like explain to you like oh well your hair texture is like this so it right. might not lay like this or i know you're trying to you know get your hair curly because you see that person curly you know, you shouldn't use this type of grease or you shouldn't use this type of uh, uh, a gel yes. or whatever. Like yeah. when she, I told her what type of style or showed her a picture, she was like, okay, well, I know what the direction you're trying to go in, but your hairstyle won't allow it to go like this. Yeah. We're going to have to, we're going to have to perm it a little bit or we, you know, we're going to have to do this and that. So she was very in, in detail. So, yes. um, and, that, that was, and that's kind of what set me apart or helped set me yeah. apart you know, in this industry, just what you're saying, just the knowledge. And, and, and not, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but I just no, 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 say no. Yeah. that that was a niche that unbeknownst to me set me apart, yeah. you know, because again, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in education. I, 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 maybe I'm old school or whatever, but I do believe education is the key. You know what I'm saying? Now, am I saying educate? that's for every single individual? I'm not saying all that, but it must be important if we got to go to school, like right. elementary, middle school, and, yeah. and, and high school. You right. know what I'm yeah. saying? But <laughs> education is the key, and it was more so. I saw it in barber college because, first of all, I didn't even know we had book work. Okay, I thought it was just cutting hair. Right. So, but thank God for the yeah. book work, honestly. Where a lot of people, a lot of people, I don't know why they make it like in our community, it's not cool to read a book or it's not cool to do, you know, schoolwork. Like, like you know what I'm saying? It's cool to come, you know, go hang out and joke around. You know what I'm saying? And I wish that we can get rid of, I don't know. Education is the key. I believe that. Shoot. That's, again, that's what helped set me apart because I didn't even realize this, that once I got into the barbering world, the barbershop, I didn't even realize that a lot of these young men don't, even, don't have fathers. 
I didn't realize because again, I didn't, I didn't grow up like I had a had a father, so right. I didn't even realize because I'm immediately thinking probably and probably just like their mothers that boys they know how to brush their hair. It's simple. They just you know yeah. and you know, but no, a lot of them they didn't even know how to wash their hair. They were washing their hair with bar soap. Yeah, they didn't <laughs> even know how to properly even brush their hair because you know there's a pattern. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, of course, a lot of them had dandruff. Mm-hmm. So I had, so that education part came into play, you know, how to, cause you know, a lot of my barber, barber bros, all they could do is just give a crispy haircut and a crispy line, which is fine. It gets us paid. But what if they have questions? What if, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, just, I, I was prepared for that without even realizing yeah. that, you know, I didn't even know that I, again, and then I'm not a boy, you know what I'm saying? So. I, there's a lot of things I learned through just cutting young men's hair, you know, that I guess maybe us women think that maybe boys automatically know, I guess I should know. I don't know. Cause us women, we know it's easy for a boy. All you guys got to do is wake up and just brush your hair. A lot of y'all don't, which you know, I don't understand why. Cause it's, I don't understand. Why it's so hard. But y'all don't. Okay. That's fine. But we just, I guess, because we know it's so easy and our hair is so meticulous. We just assume, y'all know, to just pick up the brush and just, we assume y'all know, to, hey, use shampoo and conditioner, but I think, no. I think, I think it's funny that you, <laughs> it's funny that you went down that breakdown, but I feel, <laughs> I feel like uh, for a young, a young girl, a young woman, when you're growing up, you're, 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 your mom that's doing your hair is very detailed. So she's mm-hmm. combing it. She's mm-hmm. pulling out all all the the kinks and everything. She's oh, yeah. showing you what she combing it. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember them <laughs> Oh yeah, you right she's, about that. She's showing mm-hmm. you what gel to use, how to slick the baby hair down, yeah. and all that stuff. When, but when it comes to guys, especially as young guys, we just like go put your clothes on, brush your hair, go out. But so it's yeah. not a guy that's really standing over him going, "This is how you comb your hair to the front. Yeah. This is how you pick I your hair out." Yeah. So, so. And then a lot of us as, as young men, because I was one of them, we don't want to be in the shower all day. We don't want to get wet. So we definitely don't want to wash our hair. Like, we all go in there, yeah. let the water splash yeah. on our body, and we going to get out. <laughs> they gonna, they, so your, your mom and dad going to be looking at you like, why are your hair not wet? Yeah. I, why you didn't wash your hair? Yeah. So then when they go to the barber shop and they sit in the barber uh. chair, you looking at your hair like, okay, did you wash your hair before you came here? No. no. <laughs> Did you comb it out? No, no. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. So these are not these are things that not, that are very not taught mm. to young men at an early. I mean, it might it might have changed a lot more because okay. a lot more men now are very in tune with their bodies. Grooming, their, yes. Yeah, the, gro- yes. the grooming is, is totally different now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We and uh, thank you guys. I don't know who started that trend, but because <laughs> I, I don't get it, because like women, not me. So not me, but women, <laughs> they like a nice, clean man. Like that's, I don't, like, I just remember growing up, my brother, my dad used to get on my brothers all the time about their feet. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And just like boy, yeah. Back in my day, boys were yeah. boys. They just, the more yeah. rugged. And, Play all day and then jump in the bed. <laughs> yeah, and it's not, that's not, come on, we yeah. got to do better. But yeah, times has definitely changed. Maybe a, a lot of you men went, are going a little overboard with it, but hey, who am I to? <laughs> People can look at me and say, I'm a little overboard on the other side. You know, so I can't. <laughs> so let, let's let's track back a little bit, because I, I know, um, I want to really speak on that, because like I said, a lot of okay. women um, that have been on my, my platform that have spoken, and um, they highly rated very detailed, very established um, hairstylists, barbers, and, and whatever other t- uh, platforms that they have taken on over the years. But they do speak about a lot of things that they see on the women's side of proportion of what, what they see within the industry and also the stuff that they had to deal with with the men, okay. especially in being in, in shops. And then some of them have been in a shops for a while, but then they transition to go get their own, mm-hmm. their own mm-hmm. shops, their own suites or private suites. Yeah. So what was the transition for you when you had to deal with all these dilemmas and, 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 and honestly, like where you at now, like, is this a, your shop now? And how do you 
um, the you know pick your your crew um, dealing with you know certain issues and, and environment situations that you have to deal with. Um. Okay. Say it again. What was the say? What was the initial question? <laughs> so the initial question is like you know from the experience that you dealt with to where okay. you at now. Okay. How did you maneuver through that to be in okay. a, a better comfort zone for yourself? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Ooh, nice. I like that because um, oh man, um, you know. Well, I'm going to be honest here, and this is, I'm probably going to lose all credibility by saying this, and not too many people know this, but I have pretty much been kicked out and fired, whatever, from every barbershop <laughs> that I've been at, honestly, yeah. except for one. Yeah. Shout out to these cuts in uh, Dayton, Ohio, best group of, of, of barbers. Let me tell you this real quick. Um, okay. My very first barbershop, I was there for five years. Just They quit paying the rent for two years. One day, got shut down. Oh my gosh, devastated me, changed my whole world. Um, but but it was humbling for me because I think sometimes as barbers, we can get very big headed, especially if you've been at a shop for a while and you have clientele out, out the door, you tend to think that you are all that and you are the best barber in your, in your city when in reality, no, you're not. Um, you're just the best barber where you're at in, a, in, your, in your environment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, um, so, God humbled me because I kind of, kind of lost everything, you know, like, because again, this is kind of still before social media was real big and, you know, all that or whatever. So, man, that was very, very uh, devastating. So um, I said, I said that because each shop, oh, and so, okay. So yeah, I was going through a moment depressed, whatever, whatever. Um, so I went to these cuts um, and I kind of, in the, my first shot, the five years, mm -hmm. pretty much four of it was pure hell. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it 100. Just, it was just pure hell. I learned a lot, but it was pure hell. Mm -hmm. hell. So when I got over to, finally made it over to these, these cuts, it was um, three, three guys. And they, and uh, they just resurrected it that there are still good men. Mm -hmm and good barbershops mm -hmm. in, in this world because they just, they were a barbershop of integrity. They were a barbershop of, hey, no cussing, especially if there's women, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't just like a sign posted. No, they were the sign. Like they, you know, they, they just were, they just had integrity and they stood on that and they didn't let, because in the old barbershop, I mean, what people don't realize that we don't have a human resource department. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty right. much a free for all. Like right. literally yeah. anybody can walk in and say anything. Yeah. And it's, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and so with my lifestyle, with my hair, with my skin tone, just, oh, I went through the ringer, you know, and oh man, so coming over to their shop, it was just a complete op opposite. They cr they created an environment, if it wasn't even already there. They created an environment to where we're not going to allow anybody to come in and disrespect who you are, what you represent, or anything. And that just, it, it just amazed me because, again, the barbershop is a free-for-all. And so they, they, they cushioned me, you know, they cushioned me. And, um, and I they just to this day now mind you that was probably i don't even know how long ago maybe eight <laughs> nine ten years ago so i just i will always talk about them i would because <coughs> they man and they were the best barbershop i've ever been at to this day they are the best group of men um shout out sean will and trey um, right. so yeah yeah so so i went to that shop but man god is something i tell you because right every time i get comfortable thinking okay no, nope. God's like, uh, you gotta go. No, nope. you're getting too comfortable. You gotta keep it moving. Yeah. So that's when I moved to uh, Columbus. But I love that shop so much. I was driving because Columbus was, was about an hour and 20 minutes away, driving back and forth every day. But then yeah. I had to realize, okay, I gotta let this go because I'm in a whole new city, which is the capital of Ohio, which is 
twice as big as Dayton, you know? So uh, yeah. I had to start a whole new journey. And then Columbus starting completely over again. Didn't know not nobody in Columbus or anything. That seems to be my journey, just starting over. Like, yeah, I want to tell any barber, please don't be afraid because we are afraid to start over. Trust me, I know, because our clientele is our livelihood. And man, starting over, I'm so, oh God, I still can't believe I'd be doing that. But yeah, <laughs> so yeah, start completely over again. Um, ground up, no client, no, no clients or whatever. And um, yeah, I, I went to Columbus. Uh, that was hell too, but I learned. Yeah, it was a good hell. Yeah, I love Columbus. It was a good hell, but um, but I, I and, and I say that I say it's hell. I said it's hell in the first shop. I say it's hell in Columbus, but I realized that I was the problem, not not. None of them, not the city, not the shops. Nope. I was the problem because they were doing what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like Columbus is still Columbus with mm -hmm. me not being there. Yeah. Dayton is still Dayton. The people still the same doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? It was me yeah. that was different, that didn't fit, wasn't supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if I was supposed to be there, I overstayed okay. because, you know, it's hard. I, I have a hard, I had a hard time letting go. Of, yeah, yeah, so yeah. God, yeah. he got, he, man, he, okay, you're fired. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You're getting kicked out. You got in order for me to move. And yeah. I say all that because all of that, it led me to where I'm at now. And I didn't even know that you, you I mean, just being here, here in Texas, it's a whole another ball game for me. Even though I'm still cutting hair, yeah. I have learned so much just by making this move mm -hmm. that again I started completely over. Right. <laughs> Didn't know not nobody, nothing or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Thank God. I became a student of the game again because God knew I was done. Yeah. I didn't even add so that yeah, I was done cut oh I was ready to quit. <laughs> but God is like, uh uh, I bless you with this talent. I bless you. Bless you with this gift. Come on. Yeah. Hey, I didn't tell you it was going to be easy. I said, but God, the barber college said it was going to be. What? Everybody <laughs> else that was recruiting to me said, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But geez, God, you could at least let me know that I was going to be a female, not a barber, but a female <laughs> in the male world. You know, that would have helped out a little bit. But, but I love No, but you guys. stand out. Man, I love you so. stand out. And, and sometimes standing out shows oh, yeah. you. I didn't know your, that. Your value and then put you in, in the situation and make you want to um, grow a little bit faster and stronger. Um, well, you have to. You have no choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Choice. I love I love what you shared because um, not to go fully on me. No, this is definitely please. Possible, but I, don't even know um, about you. I was in that same same road. Like um, this journey was new to me. I really didn't have no real like core. Um, Wait a minute! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Yeah. Stop! Hold on! Wait yeah. a minute! You know it. It. I'm so sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I am. I know that yeah. is so rude. It just behooves me when men yeah. say, "You know, I just I have it hard too." When it just because in my world mm -hmm. I see that you guys you guys have a past. If you look like a barber. <laughs> you get clientele. They will trip over my feet to get to you. They don't care nah. about the skill set. Nothing. Nah. So nah. I'm sorry. I just had to throw that in. I'm, I'm nah. listening though. Like, wait a minute. Okay. Not, not for me. <laughs> not for, uh, for you. How so? You look like a barber. You look. I, I, probably over time, you know, like all this. It's like act like growing pains to like you know get into that that <laughs> that realm okay. to start feeling like oh yeah I belong here because for a while I didn't feel like I belong really like you know um, I feel like if I didn't start this um, like like to be honest with you I, I'm I'm forty you know I'm um, I started this um, what third third thirties the end of thirty seven going to thirty eight I started when I was thirty seven. Three. Yeah, when I when I started this career, um, yeah. you know, coming from a different environment, di di different situation, and then now taking this over, like a lot of people questioned it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, you really want to start that career? Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, like, oh yeah. You you was already doing this. Once you move forward with that, like once you continue that, like what in your mindset make you think 
that this is going to be a lucrative business for you. Like, why, why cut here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then I had, like you said, I didn't have no clientele. I didn't, I didn't have people that was like, oh yeah. As soon as you get your your license, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bring all my people with me, and we gonna <laughs> have your your chair stacked up. I didn't have none of that. Mm -hmm. I had friends okay. look at me and, and tell me to, uh, straight to my face, "You trying to cut here? I, I'm not trying to sit up in your chair." And this is Aye. this was my road dogs that I grew up with that came really? and told me. And it went on my page when I created my social media page and wrote all under my picture, are oh, you still out there fucking up people here? So, I, I, so, I, <laughs> so you just I need you to interview to, you. You just have to have faith. Wow. You just have to have ambition. And yeah. to this day, like, you know, like like you said, like I I, I worked at one shop. They gave me an opportunity when they knew I was going to school, but I didn't, I didn't, they, their situation for me wasn't, um, like a good stable situation because I was sharing someone else's spot. So I never had like my, my own like lucrative chair and my own spot to like come, like I would work like maybe like one or two days and then, then I would have to like pack all my stuff up and take it with me until that other person would come, come back or, or leave. And then I would be able to. And, but I couldn't like really structure my my area the way I felt comfortable because right. it wasn't my my situation. So you know, after a while, I had to you know find my like okay, this ain't gonna really work out for me. I might have to right. go somewhere else. But you know, me and that 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 location, the people there, they showed me a lot and they gave me a lot of love. So I don't have no no ill will with them. Um, I went to another barber shop that I think I mentioned to you. Uh, well, this was the second shop after the, the lady that used to cut my hair as a kid, she just up and root rooted. So I didn't even know what happened, where she went. I think she was dealing with some some issues with the barbershop that she had to leave. Mm, so yeah. I went, my, I found another barbershop, started going there. Uh, and then, so when I decided to transition into this field, I was able to relocate that same barbershop and go there. And I spent um, approximately three years at that shop until I decided to leave. Because I needed to up room and, and grow in a different situation that would help me and my family. So, mm. um, as far as that, to, you know, um, cut that a little bit short just to speed it up. Every time that I relocated, I had to start over. I had to start over with new clientele. I had to start over real building my my my, my social media, wow. everything, yeah. whatever I had to do to you know be lucrative and, and show people who where I'm at, what I'm doing. Even this spot that I'm at now. I have to get up like, you know, they're used to a certain way of how they approach it, but I'm still old school. So I'm out in the streets, I'm passing out cars, I'm still mm -hmm. doing that old school kind of, right. like, you know, meet and greet yeah. kind of connection. Like, yeah. hey, I'm a barber. If you ever need a barber, yeah. I'm at this location. Yeah. So I'm still in that that realm where I'm, I'm doing yeah. that. So yeah. as far as like what you're saying, like, yeah, it, it's, it, it's never been easy. Mm. It's, it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, clearly, you know, like I'm guessing clearly, you, you know, you have a, a purpose, you know, I, I feel, I don't know. I think I'm learning. Wow. It's so refreshing to hear your story. Cause you know, you, I, I think, well, I, I tend to think that I'm the only one. And I tend to think that I say I'm the only one just because of who I am. You know what I'm saying? Because I sit here, like, I mean, I just, I don't think other females go through what I've gone through. Matter of fact, no, because I got interviewed in a newspaper to, to me and another female barber. And my story, of course, was completely opposite from her, yeah. her, her journey, as it always is when I talk to other females, which I, I mean, I'm not saying females, you know, yeah. have it rough or any, I'm yeah. this, me this particular female here. And I've never seen, I, I haven't been able to see other barbers, male barbers struggle because it's always <laughs> been the, me, the folk at everything. Yeah. Until, honestly, until, and this is again how good God is because you, I can internalize a lot of things. And it, it, it's, it's crazy because when I came here, because, well, before I moved to Texas, I made a promise. I told God, look here, Here's what's going to happen. The uh, me telling God, I'm not ever, ever going back into a black barbershop again. I'm not, never, 
God, never. <laughs> and so for three years, he let me have that never. And oh man, that was one of the best three years because I'm telling, I learned it again. I learned, I, I learned even more about men. Oh my gosh. Like, because when it was just me and the client in our, our space, yeah. they opened up and, right. oh, let me just say this. You men, you guys are hurting. You guys are, 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 are tired. Yeah. You guys, um, you guys need to talk and don't know who to talk to. Oh, right. that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> right. I get it. And I just, I love, I love when, when, well, my clients, are vulnerable. I, I I love that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because y'all, no offense, y'all getting advice from your your homeboy over. Oh, that's nothing up the game. That ain't right. no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, oh, what was I going? I forgot. Um, dang it. Uh, um, what was I saying? That. Oh yeah, I was saying never. Uh, okay, I was never going back to black barbershop. Okay, so God gave me three years to um deal with uh, my clients and da, 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 da. and then the opportunity came up to come to texas you know and you know i'm okay well, okay god you know I'm, I'm going to texas and i'm thinking i'm not gonna be i'm a barber now but i'm thinking oh, okay new opportunity new me new, <laughs> new oh, god. whatever yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. well come to find out i'm a barber okay and um i gotta get a job and the only thing i know how to do is cut hair Right. And nobody again knows me, so I can't just open up my own suite or, or whatever, open up a, a shop. No, because nobody knows me. So what? And what am I comfortable? I'm comfortable in black hair. So I gotta go back into the black barber shop. Oh, and I, oh Lord, I, oh Jesus, I, oh gosh. But I will tell you this. And I think, and, and thank God for, uh, I know everybody say they're on their healing journey, which is fine. We need you to guys to be healed. But I, I think I, I've, I've evolved, I'm evolving, yeah. you know, because everything that, that I had to deal with in all those barbershops back in Dayton, back in Columbus, mm -hmm. everything, it all came up it, here in this shop, back up in this shop, mm -hmm. blew my mind, came I couldn't even believe it or whatever, but I under, but I, I realized that again, I was the problem, not saying what they're doing is right. I'm just saying it was my reaction mm -hmm. to things. You know what I'm saying? That yeah, was the trust problem. Yeah. You know, cause, yeah. cause especially, and then, cause I realized I'm in the South now. They, they're not used to, well, I, I'm not speaking for the whole South. I'm just speaking for the South part that mm. I'm in. You know, they're not kind of, they don't take too kindly for strong women or women that's going to say, hey, uh -uh, or women that's going to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, so, oh gosh, did I lose my train of thought again? Um, so, <laughs> you, you, you got it, you got it. I, I, get, I get what you're saying. Uh, uh, okay, so, so yeah, so all those problems, everything came back and, and I had to, uh, okay, my reaction. And I learned that you can separate a person from their opinion. And I didn't know that because I felt like, you know, if you say, oh, all women are, are, let's just say the conversation, all women are going to hell. Immediately, if, okay, let's say you said that. Immediately, I'm like, oh, I'm not talking to that dude. I'm cutting him, you know what, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He don't like what, girl, okay, we ain't. No, I learned by being here because the person that was saying all women are going to go to hell, he was a good dude. Like we would have conversation and I'm a woman, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, wow. So I learned God having me learn to not shut down in that, Hey, people are talking, people just blah, 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 blah. and yes, they may be believing what they're saying, but it's about, you know, how are you going to carry yourself? Are you going to hold a grudge? Are you going to, you know what I'm saying? Are you going to just, you know, you get what I'm saying? Cause, yeah, yeah. Cause somehow we in the back in, in the lunchroom, break room, just me and him. And we're just it's having all about a conversation. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. and I even told him, I'm like, wow, this is a moment for me because you have an issue. Cause well, the problem was his baby mama was <laughs> taking him for child support. You know how y'all get up? Oh God, that's a whole nother topic oh geez i go through so much about that yeah. i don't even have no kids but anyway <laughs> so you know people project 
Yeah. Okay, that's the word I'm looking. And so I learned, oh, okay, I can separate, again, separate the man from the opinion, you know what I'm saying? And so, so yeah, and thank God I'm here because, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that it was just, I thought it was just an attack on me. Like, oh, I don't never fit in, you know, men got issues with me because I'm da 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 yeah, No, yeah. like I said, it was my, my response. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and then, and then chain God is so good. Yeah. God is good because again, I'm always in an environment where I'm getting attacked. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, I've had guns pulled out on me. I've had men trying to, you know, fight all, all kinds yeah. of stuff. But by being here, oh, other barbers and barbers that I perceive that are good guys, like, like that get along with everybody, they've had the same issue. They've had arguments where they about to, you know what I'm saying? Or, or a crazy client that came and tried to, and I'm just like, it blew my mind because it was always me. You know, I didn't realize other barbers, well, God, I think it was God showing me, Pisces, it's not, stop taking everything personal, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, but God, you only shot, it's, it was only me, but, you know, again, evolving. And so, and then I didn't even realize this because I think as I think a lot of females can attest to this, like I, we have stalkers, yeah, so these yeah. clients, yeah. I'm yeah. dealing with one now and it's just weird. Like I'm like, weird. it's just weird. But I didn't know the male barbers have stalkers too right. because now y'all ain't admitting nothing. See, I ask questions. That's I, I, I ask questions. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I'm talking, yeah, about male stalker. Da, da, da. I'm like, you know what? I have, do you guys get crazy clients like that? Do you guys have stalkers? Not thinking they was really going to answer me. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. This is something I think we need to talk about. I didn't, I didn't know that. Like, and I've asked, and, and actually we witnessed one of the barber's stalkers coming to the barber shop. It was crazy. <laughs> I was just like, I, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. That's so. that's another thing I always like to speak upon, and, and it's the mental part of um, our daily living and what, what we go through. Because, you know, like you said, we we are therapists. We are um, mm -hmm. people that are our listeners, like especially mm -hmm. besides cutting hair, that, you know, we take in a lot from our, our clientele that's sharing so much mm -hmm. about themselves and what they're going through that we don't get a chance to separate, separate ourselves from what our mental issues and mental thoughts that we're dealing with every day because we're constantly, you know, building our clientele, dealing with the next customer, trying to gain more customers, sitting with yeah. the customer, learning everything about the customer yeah. so we can, you know, build this relationship. Yeah. Then, then we get burnt out on ourselves mm -hmm. and or, you know, dealing yeah. with the, the stuff that you said that you're dealing with. Like, how do I have a relationship? you know, outside of this with my coworkers that they can understand this is the type of person I am. So we don't have any issues. Like sometimes, you know, when I come in the shop, you know, I do need to leave all the other stuff out outside the shop so I can communicate a little bit better with, with my environment. But it, it needs to go both ways. You can't just yeah. me sitting here trying to, you know, be open to everybody when I, all I feel is or I'm gaining is negativity. So that then that stress that you carry in when you go to work and you and you're dealing with that environment and then you're trying to have a, a warm caring atmosphere for your clientele and you can't do that right well that's why a lot of barbers honestly are going to suites yeah suits whatever they're called like i i, I don't know if shop owners are getting a clue right. or whatever like try, if i if i had my clientele to get oh i would be completely on my own because it's so sad the barbershop hasn't changed. Like, I really thought coming back, like, I don't know. It was, it just, it's sad. There's nothing, we're, we're still talking about the same old topics. Right. Women, <laughs> child support, sports, and Trump. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, we, there's no, invo there's no evolving. And I think, and you, you know what I thought about the other day? You know, I don't know what you guys have out in California, but like, Super cuts, great clips, yeah, yeah, knockout, lady chains, those, yeah. those chains, yeah, right? Yeah. They're barber chains, right? Yeah. You know, they stay 
constantly busy, constantly. And they're constantly hiring too, right? Yeah, yeah. And they, no offense to anybody, but they have the the least talented stylists and barbers at their establishment. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but but what I realized was you. what they're skilled in yeah. is customer service. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because I'm sitting here. Here at this barbershop, we have, I think, 12 chairs. This is the biggest barbershop because I'm used to like small town. I mean, you know, grandpa barbershops, whatever. Yeah. This is the biggest barbershop I've ever been at 12. And this is small here, but 12 chairs. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's 12. And uh, dang it, did I, just, I just forgot what I was saying. No, <laughs> you were talking about like the environment of being at, uh, uh, I would say not. Okay, the environment of being in the structured setting of a, of a shop to the mom and pop oh. ones. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I was like, okay, we had 12. I forget exactly where I was going. But I don't know where I was going with this. But I think what's lacking in the, in, in the barbershop and what I was realizing is there's not a system in, in place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just, there's there, yeah there's no there's no system and, it, and it's a free-for-all and there's no it just yeah they'll post rules but don't nobody read that and mm. you know what i'm saying and, and i mean it just i don't know it just amazes it, me how super i mean because oh that's what i'm saying there's 12 okay barbers here and this is the first barbershop where everybody can cut yeah. thank god i love being iron sharpens iron yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbers need to stop being afraid of being next to a barber that can outcut you. Right. You, that person's going to make you better. Yeah. Everybody in here can cut. I'm talking about blurry fades. Oh, man. But it ain't popping like super great clips or great clips or, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm just like, how is that? How is that possible? But like, what, how, what would make a man? Or, well, no, because I, I just strictly work with men. What would make a man go into supercuts opposed to a barber shop? Now I mean, we can fill I can in tell you those. <laughs> I, I'm just saying we can fill. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a, a good cliche surface answer for that, but yeah. we know. I, I think me and you, we, you know, we know. Yes. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, okay. And I think it's a representation of our community as well. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we don't. There's just it just seems like we're just out here just just i don't know i don't know super cut great clips whatever they have a system yeah. as, <laughs> as yeah. everything they got a system and us black folks or minorities we ain't came up with no system or we ain't even came up with a plan to to redo the system yeah. we just money got to get the bag that's all we got to get the bag I think um, I might mis be mistaken, but I think Vinny the barber, he might be in in Texas if I, I'm not mis if I'm not being mistaken on this location, but he has a, a running engine where he runs it the same way like a, a super cuts or a sports clip, and what it is with their foundation is like okay, I'm the I'm the the leader. Okay. Um, with my crew, okay. but as far as the leader atmosphere, I'm gonna run this this business in the counter um, in the counter way where, okay, it's you know it's the the breakdown percentage either the forty sixty or whatever. Okay. But I'm I'm gonna make sure that everybody's chair is filled up. I'm gonna run a a, a, ca a calendar. I'm a I'm a market. I'm gonna do all the, the necessary steps to make sure that everybody is is making making money yes, and but like you said the environment structure needs to be set up like this that we all are are working together as a team that you know the environment needs to be warming it needs to be um stable to a certain level that you know nobody feels like anybody's competing with each other man that's important too oh. yeah so i think when it comes to just the environment per se of a barber shop everybody's competing with each other i'm not yes you know you're not my owner i'm not i'm not yes. under your barella i'm paying you for a chair yes. and but sometimes you have people still thinking okay if i'm at a barbershop and i'm paying for my chair i still need the owner 
to go out there and make sure that my chair is filled up, that he's having a lot of walk-ins, that, you know, he's promoting the shop, um, he's keeping the shop clean, he's doing whatever he needs to do. That's all on him. All I need to do is walk up in the shop, take my cape off my of my chair, and start cutting hair. But they don't understand, like, yeah. okay, once you say you, you pay booth rent, then yeah. you need to do all the marketing on your own. Yeah. You're in an environment that's not structured. Yeah. You, all you doing is structuring yourself. So you need to go out there and promote yourself. If the shop is playing loud music, <laughs> playing corrupt, or playing, you know, mm -hmm. DMX, mm -hmm. and, and then you got an older um, a clientele, or you got children in there, and everybody's cussing, and nobody cares about what the what's going on. That's the environment that you're gonna be in. So it's like, how do you, how do you have both best of both worlds? You can't. It's either oh, okay, I'm gonna go and work at Supercuts, or I'm gonna work at um, Shop Clips and be in that environment. But they they gonna take a percentage. I can't say I'm a I'm I'm an owner of my own situation because you're not because you want it right. under a, a structured umbrella. Or you go get a suite and you got to, you know, like you said, you're building your clientele. So even if you're in a suite, you still got to go out there and build your clientele. Yeah. Cause even if you're working yeah. at a barbershop, you still got to do the same thing. If they don't have a, a revolving door or walk-ins, so you're just sitting in your chair like, oh, I don't want to go out there and market. I don't want to pass no cars because the shop should be doing this. No, that's not the environment that you put yourself in. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like because I actually feel that way. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Um, see, okay, it's funny because we, as Barbara's been talking, like the shop that we're, see, okay, this is what I, I guess I think I know about <coughs> my system. Like here, oh, well, let me just touch on on something. Uh, okay, okay, because like I said, I said this at the beginning of the conversation. Where I'm from, Ohio, we you can't get into a shop unless you have your license. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, sub shops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, with that being said, yeah. we, well, in my experience, I never really had to deal too much with like uh, student barbers. They went everywhere I went. Everybody was always seasoned, been there a while, you know, blah blah. blah. Okay, but here in this particular shop, the owner um, is not is not present. Doesn't advertise. Doesn't nothing. But the booth rent. I, okay, listen. Haircuts here are. Only thirty five dollars. Okay. Booth rent, two seventy five a week. What? That don't even add. Uh, but whatever. Okay. I've been there. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So right there, to me, you're not trying to help. You know, it's it's a business, and it is a business. Okay. Yeah. But barbers, I mean, you know, sir, bar, we can peek things. You know, like okay, it don't really have to be this way. Mm -hmm. You know, like like give your barbers. We need to live too. We need. We're not sitting here trying to be a millionaire, you know. We're trying to, but thirty five dollars and eleven hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. you know. Wow, you can go. But so, well, okay. So, um, oh, and so, so his structure, his system is, you know, it's open seven days a week, which I'm not used to. Back home is Tuesday through Saturday, mm -hmm. um, which is a blessing, you yeah, know. Yeah. But um, he, because the booth, and I don't like shop owners like this. I just see, again, <laughs> like, don't get in business depending on other people. Like, get in business because you have it together. You have the necessary funds, and you can run this machine yeah. by yourself. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. to me, smart. We're starting with a good system, you right. know? But I, I guess right. that's just me. I don't know. So, but we're in, I guess, we're... This, he's in a position because all the booths aren't filled up. Mm -hmm. So now we're just, we're getting students that ain't even finished with school. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, the newest barber, because we just talked, he was like, yeah, I got mad at my instructor, so I just left. I said, oh, okay. He left. He's like, yeah, I just came here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and making $40. Because the, the new barbers, I guess, the, the barber college, I don't know what the schools is teaching these new barbers. They coming out charging forty dollars. I mean, I ain't mad at you, but you know, part of me, shoot, yeah. for the longest I had, I, for years, it took me to make twenty dollars. Right. You know, this is before COVID. <laughs> yeah. And then, I was back. I was, I was in that, that, that era where you know, cuts was ten dollars, yes. twelve dollars. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So now, finally, I feel like now, finally, I'm just getting. I'm now finally getting paid after. 
15 years or whatever, because we can charge, I mean, the base is 35, but if you got a clientele, you, you can charge pretty much 40, 45, 50 on the, in, in here, you know what I'm saying? Just pr pretty much like, <coughs> so he, so, oh yeah, um, what was I saying? Okay, so, yeah, okay. okay, so he's coming in, they're not even finished, well, it's two of them, they're not even finished with school. The shop is already kind of struggling because the walk-ins ain't coming in like that. And so as barbers are, that's paying the full booth rent and, you know, charging, we, yeah, we're like, yeah, get your money, youngster, but that's not cool. You don't even have your license. Like you're on the same level as us, yeah, yeah. but not paying, even paying full booth rent or nothing. So that, that right there can kind of like, what am I saying? Uh, bring the morale a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because honestly, I'm talking about a good system would be like making sure you have good barbers. First of all, people need to know that haircut is more than just a cut. I, like, stop just hiring people because they can cut good. I don't know. I, I don't know now because um, someone, um, hey, what's her name? Barber, Barber Society. I think that's her name. Um, she posts um, out in her because I think she's in Georgia, and she posts that now a lot of these establishments, um, you know, as far as sports clubs, super clubs, and all that stuff, the system of um, like our our barber union or whatever, they're allowing them to. Um, I guess it's certain locations they they are going to eliminate you having your barber license. Oh yeah, it's here in Texas. They've been talking about talking about that as a yeah. matter of fact the school that i had taught at last monday the the owner said that he just wrote a letter appealing to the board or whoever saying don't do that that's bad that's yeah, yeah. That's so i don't know if they're saying that i mean i feel like at the end of the day you still need to go to a, a institute and learn um i mean they yeah. It's not about learning how to cut. It's learning how to be sanitary, how to you know protect your customer, yeah. uh, and at the end of the day, how to protect yourself. So yeah, yeah, you, and then but but some as surface is this too. Like I think we're doing a disservice to the public what, because okay, I, yeah, yeah. I would be angry if I went to my nail tech and she's a student and I'm paying, but I'm thinking I'm going to a professional salon. I'm not yeah, so going to somebody's what house. They, what they doing? Or, I feel like. Are you making that ground setting as in, in, institute, and you just saying like, okay, instead of like you going to these these barber schools, you can just go to an actual location where, and and I want to know like what would be the pay rate for that for someone that is not um, educated, and you're teaching them on ground settings. Like this is a ground setting that you teaching someone how to work on on uh, in the public uh, environment and teaching them how to. Um, work on nails, work on hair, and all this stuff. I'm going to tell the public. That's the thing. Yeah. Because we're doing it right now. We're, we're doing it right now. Like, and it's insane. But he already, two clients have already left because he come and he, they just know how to taper, tape, you know, taper the sides, taper the back. Now the big thing is, is the vertical bars, you know. <laughs> that's the big thing, the vertical bars. <laughs> that's yeah. what they know. The, the, the spray up, the spray on paint. There's yeah. different hair types. You can't do a black hair. I mean, but they don't look because they, they ain't even finished school yet. Yeah. So. And that, that's another, it's, another it's thing a, like uh, that you, you had spoke on the social media world. And, you know, for, for, for someone that's well established like yourself, you've been you've been in this oh, industry. Oh, I'm not well world. established. Well, I mean, you, you, you've been around enough about, to understand. I'm around, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to understand the environment of what the barber yeah. industry is based upon. So for your, for you to be coming in and looking at social media, you, you, you're kind of looking at it as maybe like, okay, it's an opportunity for me to show my work. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity for me to make connection. Mm -hmm. But you're still in the same mindset of like, like myself. Like, I still like to touch the public. Like, if I see somebody and I walk up to somebody, I'm going to be like, hey, you look like you might need a haircut. Not like that, but you like you look like yeah, you yeah, might need a barber. Or if you got a barber, if your barber's tied up, you know, give me a try. You know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Where now, this generation is like, I'm just going to put everything yeah. on social media. I don't need to talk to nobody. My my work on, on social media gives me, you know, the yeah. content. How do you feel about the realm of, like, the social media? 
especially like you said because now you got you got um people that's coming out of school and be like you know they seeing um these these you know influencers that saying no you need to charge 250 100 75 and what <laughs> I was, well, you see, I needed the young boy over here to help right. that young barber. He's 20 to help me. Right. To, so I'm the wrong person, I think, to ask about social media because I'm, I'm I'm an old head. I don't. But I, but I, think I, I would you, say this, I, though. I, social media. Hmm? I think you have been sharing that because you, you're sharing, like, yeah, I love. Like like now, you're taking a chance and you're getting on here with me to share yeah. your experience and share your journey yeah. and, you know, give enlightenment to um uh, the the new wave of what barbering is, is now but you're still sharing your oh not say old school tactics but you're, you're still giving them that 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 ground and gritty growth of like what it is to get to the to this okay yeah, yeah. so like for you to say uh, like now we, we we can say we're working hand in hand like i can i can give you my portion of what what this is and you can give me your portion but i still want you to share that it's still a growing pain. Like nothing's gonna happen as fast oh. as you think it's gonna happen because you're looking at social media and they're telling you you do this. You know what? See, I, okay. I don't. You know, I don't even know how to speak on the um, the new, like the new barbers with the social media. Um, because I, you know, because I, because my experience, you know, I'm. I'm from the 1900s. You get so what I say is not really going to be relevant because I feel now like it's a blessing and a curse with the new barbers and the social media because well with people in general because with social yeah. media is we put our best you know we we, we display our best work, our best mm -hmm. picture, our best whatever, right? And even now you can, you know, what is it? AI it or or, or Photoshop it? Or something. You see, God, I'm aging myself, but you know what I'm saying. You can tweak it, and you can. So hopefully, these new barbers know that whatever you put out there, you gotta back that up. That's the thing. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta yeah. back that up. And I'm seeing, like, this ain't me. Listen, whatever I say, it's not me just just talking. Cause trust, me, I wish I didn't have this conversation. Like, you know, I wish I could. I wish it was different. I yeah. only speak on what I literally see because it blows my mind. You know, like yeah. when I talk about nobody believes me I, and I get it. But I mean, I, I, I'm, I witness like, you know, uh, you, 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 you have pictures of your cuts, but it's just not matching up. And I'm, I'm like literally seeing it like, <laughs> OK, but I'm. Yeah. I'm not mad at it because I'm yeah. pretty sure I can't really too much talk bad because I'm sure had we had had that, I might have done the same thing, you know, because <laughs> I, again, I don't know what these barber schools are teaching these kids, but I know back in my day, they was just making it sound like all you got to do is yeah. be able to use the razor game. And at this time, $20 was a big deal because, you know, when my first barbershop, we was only charging $12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my cap, my goal was $20. And right. I was taught if you make $20, you the, you the, you the shit. Head, head yeah. head. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. what I, for the longest I was attaining to, you know, for that dang $20. Yeah. Um, Let me ask you this. Answer. Yeah. What would you tell yourself? At oh, Lord. <laughs> oh Lord! If you had, uh, if you had the opportunity to go back yes. and talk to yourself, oh, would you yeah. still allow I yourself mean. to go down the same journey, or would you enlighten them a little bit more? Like, hey, this is what it's gonna be, but don't give up, and you know, just keep pushing forward. But or would you maybe change the outcome a little bit more? Like, would it? Would you change um, some of your decisions? Yeah, yeah. The only thing I would have changed is. Ignore a lot more. I would have ignored a lot more. Okay. I fought battles that didn't need to be fought. Like, if I would have just kept my head down and just kept cutting. Because honestly, I didn't even know how good I was. That was the issue. That was yeah. the main issue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm because I'm coming out of school. I don't know how to do nothing, nothing. But for somehow, I don't know. I, I'm telling you, like, it was, it was almost like God just touched my hand. And all of a sudden, I could do a line, a crispy lineup. The blade was my thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And but I feel because 
all the barbers would talk about me. That I literally thought that I could not cut hair, but the whole time I could. And so, so that's what I'm saying. I would have ignored, I would have just, if I could have just go back, I would have just kept my head down and just cut, just cut, yeah. just cut. No, I love that. I just love cut. that. Yeah. Just cut. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was the same that's way. What I, was I, the same way. I was always yeah. like timid and scared and yes, not yes. knowing and, and like, it uh, hand, said it handicapped me. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it handicapped me so. Yeah. Yeah. So much. And you're it, always so looking long. for someone's like, kind of like, I would say not in a way like they're rooting for you, but you want to, you want to, you want to get, get that I, like that credit. Right. When sometimes and just, I did. I got yeah. it from my clients, yeah, honestly, because yeah. Yeah. my clients, that, that's they, where they are the one. I think yeah. they are the ones that taught me barbering because they're the one that taught me that, A, I was an artist. They taught me that yeah. it's it's an experience. Yeah. You're creating an experience. Like, and I'm like, they don't even understand. I just got done crying because this barber just dogged me out. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I love that. Um, I love that. Yeah, I love that you I, shared that. Cause a lot of people need to hear that. A lot of barbers that's coming up need to hear that. Like, so I'm looking at your peers or stop looking at all these, mm. uh, these mm. barber influencers and, and looking for them to give you credit on what you're doing. The person that you need to be getting credit is the one that's putting 50, 40, 60, 80, a hundred dollars in your hand. Every time you cut your they and they keep coming back yes. and they keep coming back. Say, yes. I, Hey, I enjoy sitting in your chair. I enjoy you. I enjoy you cutting my hair. That's the person that you need to be, enjoying and, and and looking forward and to not for not her. knowing barbara and florence yeah, to exactly. give you a like on, on your on your picture like that don't yep. yeah yeah so yeah definitely would have ignored i was i was trying oh gosh if i could go back why did you ask this question i was trying to because i felt like i had no respect i felt like all the guys had all the respect i, I just kept every single day I, honestly every single day up, up until i came to this shop I was fighting for respect. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get no respect. Now I have clientele, like I'm eating off my, like I, I have not had to have another job, but thank, and thank you God. Yeah. You know, and I'm not knocking, cause a lot of barbers, they have full time yeah, jobs yeah. or other jobs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I've been blessed to be able to, you know, so clearly I feel like, okay, I'm doing something right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, what was I saying? Like, you said, See, this is why I, yeah. I just be forgetting. Uh, I don't know what I, 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 I know throughout our, our conversation and our journey together today, mm -hmm. it was uh, very wonderful. And I'm glad for everything that you shared. And most of what I love the most that how you spoke highly on, you know, just being in tune to faith and understanding that with the guidance of faith and, and oh, the yeah. Lord yeah. that you Absolutely. can that you can accomplish anything long as you, yeah. you allow that door to be I'll open. Put a quit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And allowing that oh, connection allowing that connection to keep building. I always like to leave my audience with this and it's called Law of Attraction. And I know you've been speaking on it all through our conversation, but speak on it one more time. Like how do you lose mm -hmm. law of attraction in your everyday life? You know, your spirit your, your work, your, your, just yourself in general. Well, I'm not too familiar. I'm sorry with law of attraction. I'm really, I, I just know for me, it's just like, I, I mean, just my relationship with God. Like, yeah, that's law of attraction. Like every morning, I mean, especially dealing with the public. Like, I, I quickly realized that I had to be, you know, I couldn't be partying, you know, and, and, right. and doing all that and then having a hangover and coming out and dealing with the, but no, I, I had this, this profession <coughs> actually disciplined me because in order to deal with the public, I have to be the best that I, you know, be the best that I can be at that, you know, at the, at the, at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't come in if I'm sick or if I have, a, if I'm, especially if I'm heartbroken, yeah. I can't, I, I realized I can't give an adequate haircut. <laughs> so what I'm saying is I, I make sure every morning I got to get up. I got to drink my coffee. I got to, um, you know, uh, listen to my Joyce Myers. Oh, I love me some Joyce Myers. <laughs> yeah. And, and just, you know, I mean, just in pray. Not, I'm not trying to sound cliche or anything. I'm telling you like 
it wasn't my choice. Thank God. He, God got a hold of me. Uh, oh, thank God. But um, yeah, I just, that's what grounds me. It's just like every morning I just got to, you know, um, have that, that quiet time and that, you know, and then and I can go out in the real world and deal with yeah. the uh, people. But I just want to say for, for my female barbers, first of all, I love being called female barber. Like, there, it's going around yeah, a lot this of, topic about a lot of them don't that. Want to the be females that. are like, no, I, I'm just a bar. I don't want that tag. Yeah. That's fine. Because yeah. I think I used to be that way, too. I don't know. But no, I love being called a female barber. Now, once I'm in the shop, I'm a barber. Okay. You know, but outside of it, I'm talking like, yes, I'm a female barber. I want them, my clients to be like, yeah, a female, a female or their friends to be like, who cut your hair? Uh, a female. What? A female did that? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Please. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a niche for me. Like, yes, female barber. Barb her. I came yeah. up with the word barber. I love that. I love, when yeah. I saw that, I was Barb like, that's her. dope. So, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Please, females. Yeah. Like, hold on, man. It's cool to be a female barber, man. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about, like, outside the world. Yeah. Like, a lot of guys, they like that. Like, honestly, female barber? Oh, okay, I'll check her out. You know, now, you know, that mentality, oh, it came a long way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah, I love that. Female barber. Yeah. I know one thing that I wanted to touch on that you spoke about in, um, is the environment and the setting of the individual and, um, what you're attracting so i know you spoke oh, highly okay. about like you know how you perceive yourself and how you you maneuver within yeah, the shop right. is what you gonna bring back and how um it, it can it can kind of, kind of like put you in a bad situation because if you are a barber that don't care about your work, work atmosphere as mm -hmm. far as like how you, you you present yourself like if you come to work drunk Come to work high, or you going to you you going to break and you you you're getting high, and then you want to come back and then you want to do, then if that's what you putting out, and that energy you putting out, that's the type of environment and that's what type of clientele you gonna get. So if you get someone that that you know, if you just a street personality and you, all you want to do is talk about the streets and you want to live that street life, yeah. and then you want to come to the barber set and you want to 